Hey everyone, Matt Seuss here, and in this video, we are going to take a deep dive into the luminance range masking inside of Lightroom Classic. Now, this video is actually a recording inside of my Mastering the Digital Darkroom online community and membership program that I have that is designed to, well, help you master the digital darkroom. So if you're having trouble struggling with trying to get the best out of your photos and editing them and want coaching by me and a membership community, be sure to check it out. I got a link down below there. Now, I'm making this video free for from my membership because of the benefits that some of my students are getting from watching this video. And I wanted to share that with my YouTube audience here. One of my students said, thank you. I started a course on luminance masking and gave up. Your explanation provides what I need to know at this point. So I hope you enjoy this video. If you like what you see, be sure to subscribe down below to my YouTube channel and also take a look down below. I'll have a link to my Mastering the Digital Darkroom and I hope to see you inside that membership community. All right, in this video, we're going to take a look at the luminance range for creating masks inside of Lightroom Classic. Go ahead and open up this photo here that I have for you. Uh, this isn't a raw file, it's a TIFF file. I've gone ahead and added some grayscales down below and some color uh, swatches too. And this will be used for uh, this video and for the video on the color range masking. Let's go ahead and open up the masking and click on luminance range. Now, once we click on luminance range, we can then, we have this little uh, eyedropper here. We can go ahead and click on any area in our photo to select the luminance range of that. Now, when luminance range is not based on color. It's based on tone. It's based on the lightness and the darkness that exists in your photo, irregardless of color. Now, my, by me clicking in that blue area here, that's sort of a little bit brighter than a mid-tone. If I click on the, on the clouds, obviously that's more of a highlight. If I go into the shadows here, this is selecting just the shadows. And we can see when I do that, it's selecting the darker areas of the photo. Now we can also notice here too, I clicked on a dark area in my photo and look at what is being selected here. Again, my mask is set for this uh, magenta color here. And let me actually go ahead and increase the intensity of this so we can really see what's going on here. There we go. So now uh, by me clicking on that dark area, look, it's taking care of the darker areas of my photo. And we can see that from that grayscale chart that I have at the bottom. If I go into my highlights, if I just wanted to uh, select the brightest areas of my photo, we can see where that's being affected too. So obviously my whites and a little bit of a uh, little bit of shades of gray. I can go ahead and click and drag two to select even more tones. And look at that. I'm selecting now so many tones that pretty much almost any adjustment that I'm going to do is going to affect the entire image. Let's go ahead and we'll just go ahead and select the sky though. So I'm selecting the sky. Obviously there's also some other tones in the water that are being affected as well. We can see here, just like I was telling you before, it's a little bit brighter than my midtones. So my midtones would be right in the center area here. And then to the right, it's selecting a little bit more of that and just a little bit less of uh, some midtones over here. Now we have a whole cool way of being able to adjust the tones outside of just clicking on that spot. Let's say I wanted to dial in that control a little bit. Take a look at the luminance, uh, the luminance range over here. Now this is on a scale from zero to 100. It's a little bit different than when we are in uh, working in levels where zero is uh, black on levels and 255 is white. This is zero to 100. So for every one increment on this luminosity range, it's like 2.5 increments on our traditional levels adjustment from zero to 255. So just keep that in mind when I'm doing these, uh, explaining this adjustment to you over here. So if we take a look here, see this little center area here where it is solid, that is where the adjustment is being done full 100%. So kind of like the uh, brushes that we were using in the masking where the dead center was at 100% and then there was feathering on the outside in the lumen, uh, the luminance range here, that center area is what's being adjusted at 100%. And then look at these sliders to the right and to the left. Those are the feathering involved. And we can see that here. So these two squares that were selected down below here, that represents that middle area there. And then here to the right and to the left is the feathering. Watch what happens if I just click and drag over here. Look what happens. I lost that feathering 
over here. So now this tone is not being affected in my, uh, in my mask. And then on the right hand side, watch as I increase that slider, we're going to lose the mask over here or decrease this slider. So let me go ahead and decrease that and look at that. And so now that is where the range is being applied and it's being applied pretty strong. And we can see that here. So we can see here, this is a even transition from black on the left to white on the right. And notice how solid this has become now, that transition. So this is gonna make a really hard edge, basically like with no feathering, like we were doing with the brushes. If I drag this to the left, look at the feathering it's now doing, going to my uh, shadows. And as I drag this to the right, look at the feathering it's now doing to my highlights. We can also click and drag this and shift it any which way we want. We can go from the left to the right. Uh, let me just show you for visual reference. Let's drag these sliders in here and it's selecting these two areas right here. So about, you know, 20 numerical values because each one of these blocks is 10 values on that zero to one, uh, 100. So I got 20 uh, increments right here. I can go ahead and increase this even more. And as I go to the left, look at, we've now gained another 10 increments. Don't get too wrapped up on the numbers uh, per se, but I'm just trying to explain the concept to you on this zero to 100 scale that they have here. And speaking about the numbers, the numbers on the left are showing you those, those K values, those group, those tonal values here. So this is at 32, 32, this is at 67, 68. So 32, 32 means that there is no feathering at all. 67, 68 means I have just a hair feathering. If I bring this down to 67, now I have no feathering. If I increase this, the mask is stopping at 100% at that 67 number going to 100 for white. But then from 67 to 89 is where that feathering is taking place. Now, again, you don't have to know the numbers per se when you're working on your photos. But this is for those of you who like to sort of geek out on all the science and, and technical stuff on that. That's, that's really important to, to then understand and know. There is a little icon here, show luminance map. If I click on that. It's going to do a red overlay. So anything that is red, that is going to be affected by any adjustments that I make. And you can go ahead and turn that off. Uh, sometimes it's just easier to see that real quick than when you have your regular show overlay on for the masking. Now, when I am using this luminosity, um, it's basically, you know, luminosity masking. So the luminance range, generally I do pre prefer to have this do a blend. And I'll show you why. Let's go ahead and let's do that with no blend. Let me turn off my overlay right now. And what I'm going to do is just select the water right here. Um, let's see. Let's go ahead and do that. And let's get rid of any feathering. Let's turn all that feathering off and let's turn that masking off. As I start increasing the brightness, you can see how there is a real sharp edge. And I'm going to an extreme here, but you can see how there is a really sharp edge between everything. Now watch what happens when I increase the feathering. See how that now blends over to everything. So when I'm using luminosity masks, masks, I generally like having a bit of feathering there so that it's blending whatever effects that I need to between different tones. And you do got to be careful with luminosity masks. They can work really great. They're usually, in, in my experience, they're usually good for smaller increments because the, the larger the increment you do, let's say you're going from your exposure, you know, like right now I have a plus 0.42. You can hardly see that adjustment uh, visually in here. I mean, it did make a nice effect, maybe a little bit too much in the whites here, uh, but it's not super obvious that I did any adjustments to it as opposed to if I went to an extreme here and now coming up here, you'll start seeing transitions in your photos between uh, different tonal ranges. So be careful of that when you are doing the, uh, when you are using this luminosity masking. Usually for me, when I am using this, it's to brighten up my shadows a little bit more. So maybe I'll go ahead here and go into my shadows and let's reset that. Um, so I, I clicked on my shadows and then what I'll do here, I clicked on my shadows in the photo. And then what I'll do here is increase my shadow slider here. So now this is really just affecting any of the shadows just in, in the tones here that you can see from my mask and not affecting any shadow areas over here. 
So that's when I'm usually using that uh, luminosity masking. Other people do a ton of adjustments through luminosity masking. So it all depends on your own personal uh, preference in terms of using the masking. I would start out small and then gradually work your way up to doing more complicated masks with luminosity masks. And just like everything else with masking, you can go ahead and subtract from your masking. And let's say I did not want to have certain areas that were getting darker here or uh, increase in my shadows. I didn't want to increase the shadows here. So go ahead and erase all of that. And now when I'm doing that adjustment, it's not affecting the, the brightness down here. It's not increasing my shadows down here, obviously, because I don't have the mask. So that is luminance range masking. In the next video, I will show you the color range.